Now we're recording. Good morning um, to all the mothers out there. I hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day. We're going to do um, a little bit of variation today, but really not much. Nothing is strenuous as always. It's nice and gentle, but we're going to be working on the shoulders, upper back, neck today. And so if you have a yoga strap, that's really going to help you. And if you don't, it's okay. It's not a huge deal. You can sit and you can still get this feeling of drawing the shoulders back. But what I'd like you to do is you're going to take your yoga strap. Now, most of the time I have you have it in a loop, right? We always have this loop, but I want you to actually take that loop out or you could just pull that loop till it's really small and keep it in. And then, and I'm sorry I'm wearing black on black today, I didn't think clearly. But right about where the shelf of a sports bra is, okay, or a regular bra. And for the gentlemen out there, the base of your shoulder blades, okay, you're gonna find about the middle of your strap. So it's here in my hand. And I'm gonna take that strap behind me and place it right across Yes, I know I'm wearing black on black, but right across that shelf bra space, which is right at the bottom tip, kind of a little bit lower than the shoulder blades. And then I'm going to take these straps, and I call this the Continental Soldier, throw them over your shoulder like a Continental Soldier. Do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a Continental Soldier? Whatever that means. And then just kind of make sure there's no twists and turns in it. So it's nice and smooth. So just kind of pull it, right? And then we gotta reach back. We gotta grab those straps and cross them. I'm actually gonna use that loop to hook one thumb into. And I'm gonna, ooh, that feels great. Tug on that. Now, one of the great things, <laughs> one of the great things about Zoom is that, of course, we're all practicing from our home, but I'm looking into virtual land, but I'm really looking at myself right here. And I'm not a big proponent of having mirrors in yoga studios because what I've observed is that everyone's really obsessed with how I look, how I look, how I look. And it's really about how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? But for some things, it can be nice to see. So if you can see yourself in your screen, right? If I was sitting like this, you can see that this, my right shoulder is dipped down. So I want to even out my shoulders, give a tug on that strap. I'm kind of pulling out a little bit and exaggerate. Mm, shoulder blades drawing back. And then take some deep breaths. We're really bringing the breath not only down into the belly, but also up, up, up into that space where the strap is across the back of the body. and out all the way. And breathe in. And now, now keep breathing. And if at home, if you don't have a strap, I just want you to take your arms out, your palms up and draw your elbows in, almost like you're gonna try to pin your elbows behind you. And at the same time, lift your chest up, 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 driving that. So real exaggeration of this expansion through the front of the body and then release the strap and lay your palms facing up on your thighs. If it feels weird to keep the strap there, you can slide it off. But if you can keep the strap there, just keep the strap there. Hmm. Let your eyes close. And settle in now for our morning meditation.
Mm. There's a yoga sutra that translates to when a negative thought or emotion arises, we should cultivate the opposite. And cultivating the opposite, whether thoughts arise, right, emotions is very powerful, but also cultivating the opposite of our normal patternings of our body. So unfortunately, normal patternings can resemble something like this. Rounded shoulders, closed heart. Mm. So we cultivate the opposite. And using props like a strap or blocks as we're going to do today can help to give your body this feedback to remember the feeling. So we remember the feeling of that strap from the shoulders back, pressing and lifting the back of the heart up, bringing the breath into that space where the strap was, bringing the breath down into the belly. And we sit with that feeling that feeling of expansiveness through the heart center. And letting the breath be rhythmic, smooth, quiet, even. If possible, inhaling for a count of about five or six, and then exhaling for the same length. Samavritti breath. Proven, proven now through scientific research to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, the tend and befriend side of our nervous system. We cultivate the opposite of the react, the action, the reaction, the fight or flight side of our nervous system. When we notice something is not working for us, we can cultivate the opposite. Maybe your diet isn't working for you. Maybe you have a diet full of sugar and processed foods. And you cultivate the opposite. You have a diet that doesn't have processed foods, sugars in it. Maybe you're eating a diet really heavy in meat and you yourself are feeling heavy and sluggish. Well, we cultivate the opposite. Fresh vegetables, whole grains, Maybe you have a really sedentary lifestyle or you work in little five, 10, 15 minute walks in your day. Mm. Your mindfulness practice is this opportunity to tune into your body, to tune into your breath, but also a time for reflection, what's working, what's not working. Let the palms be facing upward on the thighs, soft hands. The hands will naturally cup when they're relaxed. And see if you can sense this connection between the center of the palm and the center of the heart. Open and receptive. Mm. Don't lose the breath. 
don't lose the awareness of the breath. And then let the palms come to meet at the heart, generate some friction here. Eat. And then place one hand on top of the other. Mm. And an honoring of all the mothers out there with the, the Shakti energy, the feminine life force. Creation. Mm. This yin energy. Ida, lunar. Bring your palms to the heart. Honor and bow. We all came from this source. We all came from a mother. And now, before we come to lie down, once again, take your strap. I'm just going to turn to the side once again. Feel free to extend your legs and, and shake them out. You're going to take the strap behind you. Just kneel so you can see here. You're going to take the strap behind you and hold the strap so your palms are facing forward. Okay. And then you're going to turn your palms out. So palms face forward and then they turn out. Okay. So I'm externally rotating my shoulders and then just reach the arms back. You could be on your knees here, you could be seated and feel the navel draw into the spine, almost like you're doing a little bit of the back bend here. Just breathe here. Keep turning those arms out. So big opening for the front of the arm. Look up. Oh, and if you can, bow forward. You can let the palms face each other and take that strap up into the air. And inhale. You can do this from your knees. It's really nice if you can sit on your heels. Not everyone can. You can sit in a chair. You can sit cross-legged as well. Turn the palms out, lift the arms up, and then turn the palms to face each other and reach that strap up and underneath the head. Your hands are a comfortable distance, a little wider than the hips, and come all the way back down. And rest, let the hands come to the thighs. Notice what that's like. Oh. Maybe some tingling in the hands, in the fingers. And one more thing again before we lie down. This is one of my favorite restorative poses to do, and I think. If you have worked with me one-on-one -on -one out there in the world and you've had any sort of shoulder injury, congestion, pain, I probably recommended this. So we went to yoga blocks. And again, if you don't have yoga blocks within your quiver of yoga props at home, um, they're cheap. You can find one, you know, the interweb, TJ Maxx, Walmart, probably. And they are rectangular shaped. So there's three heights here. We have this lower height, which is three, I think they're four inches thick. And then we have the side, which I think is about six inches or so. And then tallest, which is about eight inches or so, I think. And we want one block on its highest setting. And then we want the second block on its middle setting. And we're going to place them, oh, 
you know, eight inches or so far. So you're going to be able to shift them around if they're not in the exact spot. So not too far, not too close. Where we're going to lay this lower block here is right where that strap was, right across the bottom of the shoulder blades. We really want the shoulder blades to be on that. And then the head, the very back of the skull, called the occipital ridge, we want right on that tall block. So we're going to turn around. Okay? And then I take my hands, my thumbs, and just kind of hold that block. So as I come down, I can feel that edge of the block right there where the base of my sports bra is. And then lay my upper back on that block. And then bring my hands back and adjust the block, taller block. So it's right under my skull. You don't want that block tipping. So you want to make sure that you're not putting the block like this, right? And trying to lay your head on it because you want that block solid. And then just maybe lift your chest by pressing into your head to move the lower block around so it feels comfortable. Oh, so nice. And then stretch out through your legs, activate your legs, push out through your legs. This is a variation of the fish pose. I'll move that out of the way so you can kind of see. Let's go on the upper back. So legs are really strong, reaching out. And then the arms, we're going to take up to the sky, palms face each other, strong legs, strong arms. And on the inhale, slowly reach the arms up over the head. You might feel the bottom tip of the shoulder blades kind of butting up against the block. And just go until your full extension. And then we're going to come out of it. Exhale, inhale, reach through the legs, reach the arms up. Really try to extend the arms way above your head. And then back. You can relax your legs for a moment if you'd like. And then stretch through the legs, reach, extend, 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 extend. And hold here, reach through your middle finger. Reach through the center of your heel and then take the arms back up and lay them down once again, palms up. Close your eyes and take a few breaths here. Breathing, settling. And then from here, bend your knees and support yourself on one elbow and roll on off. To the side and take those blocks and just move them to the side here and come to lay down. So if you only had five minutes or so, 10 minutes or so to do a short practice, you could do that. A little mini shavasana, oh, a little meditation practice and drop in. And so feeling the weight of your body now settling into the earth, just letting go. Notice what it feels like in your body today. Maybe if you've been doing a practice with me for a while, a home practice where you spend time in Shavasana checking in, Having done those two exercises before, it might feel a little different in your shoulders. And then I would say just drive your left shoulder down into the earth. And we're talking about the shoulder, there's the shoulder joint, okay, which is made up of the shoulder blade and the collarbone actually coming together to form this socket and then the arm bone. So I want you to just drive that whole structure down into the earth and then relax. And then drive that whole structure on the right side down into the earth. 
and then relax. So go slowly on the inhale, press that left shoulder, notice what that's like, what it feels like, and all the tissues and corresponding bones and ligaments, and then relax. Right side. Oof. Relax. One more time, each side. Seems really simple than it is, which is really effective here. And then relax. Pause. Don't be in a hurry. And then look over at that left arm and press that left shoulder down, but we're also gonna reach out through the left hand now. So adding on left shoulder grounds, reach out long through the left arm and turn the head to look at the left hand and then roll the head back and relax the arm. And then drive the right shoulder down, reach through the right arm as you look out to the right hand, open the fingertips, stretch through the palm, and then relax. Left arm, drive the shoulder down, reach out to the left hand, look into the, like you're looking into the palm, fingers are reaching. Relax. Right side. Press the right shoulder in. Reach out through the right arm into the floor. The right shoulder presses. Stretch the fingers wide. Relax. Once more each side. Mm. And then come back and rest. Notice. And we're going to bend the elbows, interlace the fingers behind the head, bend the knees. Those of you that have been with me, you know what's coming. Spinal undulation two, second variation. So we're going to start with the upper body first. We're going to press the elbows into the earth. And I want you to take your chin to the ceiling. We're not going to lift our head quite yet. But as you exhale, you're going to bring your elbows in and take your chin to your chest. Again, not lifting the head quite yet. I want you to squeeze your head with your forearms, chin to chest. Inhale, press the elbows, chin to sky. Try to look all the way above you. Exhale, chin to chest. Elbows squeeze in. Inhale, open, chin to sky. Try to look all the way above you. Exhale, chin to chest, squeeze in. Inhale, elbows open, chin to sky. Now arch your low back up off the floor. Take a big breath here. So we're gonna mini back bend. And then exhale, chin to chest, elbows in. Slowly lift your head up as you flatten your low back into the earth. And then slowly, slowly uncurl. Open elbows, chin to sky, arch the back. Exhale, elbows in, chin to chest. Head lifts back flat. So in that order, but make it smooth. Make all the movements flow together like a choreographed dance. Flowing from one step into the other without hesitation with a breath. And then you can start to bring in some rotation. So next, exhale, head, okay, hug head with elbows, chin to chest, but then curl to your right. Push through the feet, knees stay up to the sky, and slowly come down. Open elbows, chin to ceiling, arch the back. Exhale, elbows in, chin to chest, and then curl. Support that head and neck.
the degree to which you rotate can vary. You can make it more of like a little mini crunch or you can make it more of a rotation. Try not to be herky-jerky with it. Try not to fling your upper body around. Make it slow so your core is doing the work. And then we're working core, we're also working the core of the shoulder joint. Healthy range of motion in the shoulders. Healthy range of motion in the upper back, which is supported by literally the low back and the abdominal core. Not working at all with this class. Oftentimes, upper back pain can come from weak low back, weak abdominal core. Go ahead. One or two more. Let your last one go right through the center like you started. And then release the legs, release the arms. Get there when you get there, no rush. We'll be here waiting in Shavasana. Observation. And then let's bend that left knee. Right leg is going to stay straight. And we're going to do one side at a time. So it's left knee bent, left arm out to the side. And on the inhale, we're going to send that left knee to the right and that twist. And then look out through the left arm and pin the left shoulder down as you reach up through the left hand, like you started with. And then exhale to come back and rest. Just the left side. Let's do a few. Angle that left knee to the right, reach up through the left arm. Because you're twisting, you might not have as much extension and length out through that left arm. And then come back and rest. Inhale to rotate through the spine, reach and look towards that left arm. See if you can feel on the movement the left shoulder blade pressing into the back of the heart. Mobilizing that shoulder blade is key to happy shoulders and also the neck. Come on back to the center. Rest, slide that left leg out. Notice what it feels like through the neck, shoulder, leg. And then bend the right knee, right foot flat. And on the inhale, send that right knee to the left. Just get a sense for the movement here. Look to the right hand. And then exhale and come back. Inhale, right knee rotates to the left, reach to the right hand, pin that right shoulder down. Exhale back and rest. Inhale, rotate and as well, feel that right shoulder blade rising up into the back of the heart. As you press the, it's really like more of the rear deltoid of that right shoulder down into the earth. One more after this one. Exhale. So I come back, slide the legs out, rest. And digest that movement. Let your body digest that movement.
And then both the knees, take the feet a little bit wider. Interlace the fingers behind your head. Feet about as wide as your mat, and then we're gonna drop the right knee in now. I did a similar movement. But as that right knee drops in, the left foot, left knee stays firmly planted, stationary. And then the right knee comes up. And then the left knee drops in, and now the right foot, right knee stays stationary. Work that internal rotation. Maybe it's called like an in flare of your hip. And breath. Back. Okay, back and forth. Right knee drops in. Left knee. Inhale on the movement, breath comes in, create length, and then come back. And now pause. Slide your upper body to the left. Elbows do not lift. That's important. Don't lift your elbows or your head to get there. Slide, but we're on a slidey surface. And then drop your right knee in to the left heel. So now it feels as if your right elbow, right knee are sliding apart from each other, which they are. And then slide back and bring it back to center. And let's do that on the other side. So slide your upper body to the right. And then drop the left knee and we're breaking it down. We'll put them together. Right knee stays pointed up to the sky and then exhale back to center pause. Let's do it together. Slide your upper body to the left, drop your right knee in. Press the right elbow into the earth. Exhale, slide back and release. Slide upper body to the right, left knee drops in. Left elbow reaching away. Exhale, slide back, relax. Slide to the left, now look at the right elbow. Right knee drops in. Slide back. One more time, look at that left elbow, slide. And back. And let the knees fall into rest. Release the arms and give yourself a hug. So hands come to hold shoulders, arms rest on the chest, close the eyes. Turn inward. And you can keep the knees just like that. Let the hands slide down the arms till they come to the elbows. Old fashioned typewriter. Arms float over the chest. On the inhale, take the elbows to the right, look to the left. Peel that left shoulder up onto the floor. And then arms come back to the center. Gaze up, pause. And arms go to the left, pulling on that right arm, right shoulder blade, peels it off the floor. Look to the right, and then back to center, pause. The arms to the right, look to the left. And back to center, pause. Arms left, look to the right. Back to center, pause. Now switch the crossing of your arms and continue. Next time the arms come floating over the chest, pause here. Bring your feet and your knees hip width apart. Slide your legs back out straight. And on the inhale, press through the heels that we started with in our fish pose. Hold firm onto the elbow tips. Punch those elbows to the sky. And then reach the arms up over the head. This time holding elbows, big breath in. 
And then exhale, bring the elbows back over the chest, relax the legs. Inhale, press to the heels, punch those elbows to the sky, reach, extend, take chin slightly to chest. Try not to overcompensate by arching your low back excessively. What's excessive? Well, there's going to be some space under the low back, but we're not excessively coming into a back bend. So we don't want to feel our ribs flare up and out. So see if you can hold this position, you know, almost as if you're stitching the ribs together, there's going to be space in your low back. This is a lot of flexion for the shoulder joint, arms overhead, reach to the heels, breathe. And then slide your body a little to the right, push through the left heel. Slide your body a little to the left, push through the right heel. Oh, and back to center, release. Arms rest. And take your time, bend knees. Roll to your belly. Stack palms under the forehead. Rest here. Feel the breath in the belly. Notice what it just notice what it just feels like to be here. Get your hands for a pillow. And then we're gonna tuck our toes under so the toe pads are on the floor and we lift the knees up. At the same time, we're gonna lift the head. So it's a Gentle back bend, belly stays on the floor, forearms stay on the floor, head and knees lift. Exhale to come down, elbows might slide a little bit. Untuck your toes. And tuck toes, squeeze legs, lift up. Exhale, release. Tuck toes, lift, shift. Exhale to come down. Couple more. Always paying attention to what it feels like in your body. Don't move into pinching pain. You feel pinching in your low back. Don't lift as high. And then exhale to come down, rest here. Your head is gonna stay down. Don't worry about what your legs are doing. But we're gonna keep our palms on the floor and just lift the elbows up and then release them down. Lift them up, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Press down through your pubic bone, exhale. Inhale, lift elbows, press down through pubic bone. Exhale, release. Now, next repetition, we're gonna lift elbows and then the hands and the head. Hands stay glued to each other, glued to the forehead, but they come off the floor. Exhale, release. Inhale, elbows lift, head and hands. Exhale. Elbows up, and if you want to, you can lift the legs up. Strong work in the back. Elbows lift, head and hands, maybe the legs. Oh, you gotta rest two more if you can. If not, just rest here. So good. For the low back, so good. For the upper back, whole spinal extension. And keep the head up, reach the arms forward, lift all the way up and exhale all the way down. Can bring the arms down inside the body. Turn the head to one side. 
and to the other side. And then roll slowly, slowly. That's a lot of work for the back if you don't do stuff like that regularly. Slowly, slowly roll. No rush. Come back to that resting position. Give yourself a hug. Knees together, feet wide. Let the arms drape here. Release the arms. You can keep the legs like this, feet wide, knees together, or you can slide them out. Notice what it's like. What's it feel like in your chest? Do you feel more grounding the back of the shoulders into the earth? A lot of us, the shoulders curl up. This practice is hopefully allowing the shoulders to settle back. Now the next movement we're gonna do is with a bolster. We've got about eight, nine minutes left to class. If you don't have a bolster, just rest in the Shavasana. Just stay here for the next eight minutes. If you have a bolster, okay, and those blocks, roll to your side. And we're going to take one of our blocks up on its mid height. And we're going to take our bolster lengthwise. And we're going to set that block. So it would be basically under where the head is. Okay, if you have a really long bolster, like one of the long round ones, you don't want to scoot it up. If you have a squishy bolster, uh, you get a new bolster <laughs> because it just doesn't work for a lot of the restorative foods. It's too squishy. Okay. So, because if I put weight on here, there's a little bit of a give, but squishy bolsters, they just fold in half and there's, they're not supportive under your hips. Um, and these bolsters, they're really not that expensive. It's just a generic bolster. So I'm going to then come so that my low back is up against that bolster. I'm going to lay down. And so then the head is supported. I'm going to extend my legs and we're going to rest here. And this is it for class. <clears throat> legs flop open. You can even do a little bit of rocking with the legs. It's really nice just to, if you put your hands on your belly, you can kind of feel that rocking. Rocking motions are so good for the body. You can even wiggle a little bit. Arms out to the side. And this pose here, as you settle in, it's great for all bodies. It's so good for women in pregnancy because they're not always on their back. You could even build them up you know, a little bit more. If it feels too squishy down there. You know, you could build it up a little bit higher. Like that. Something like that. You know, you can get creative kind of with that. So having more of an incline. So they get this opening. Because there's so much, you know, heaviness in the front of the body. And, and good for all bodies here to be here and experience the support and this opening. So settle in. We've got five minutes left of class. And let your body rest. And let your body rest. If you are human, <laughs> you're probably on the go. You probably got a lot of lot of things you're juggling, a lot of balls in the air, little taskmaster. I am whew, the best at it. A lot of things going on. <sighs> so 
So let your body drop in here. Drop into the support. Some of us, we don't feel like we have the support we really need. And our nervous system can take that on, feeling unsupported. And so let your yoga practice be supported. Use the blocks, use the strap, use blankets, use bolsters to build up the support underneath you, the foundation. Your nervous system will feel that. And then when you build from the ground up, the mind can relax, the mind feels supported, you have more clarity, you have more creativity, more focus, more energy. Back to the breath we started, Samba Vritti breath, inhaling for five or six. And exhaling for five or six seconds. Whatever feels most comfortable, you don't want to strain to get there. If it's not comfortable to breathe for that long, it's okay, maybe three, four seconds to start with. You want to make sure that you're in this posture that your head is not, your chin is not tipped up. So I just scoot it down a little bit here. Encourage chin to chest. Long neck. Now, if you're comfortable in this position and the breath is comfortable where you're already inhaling for six and exhaling for six, See if you can inhale for six and exhale for nine. Really feel the weight of the body dropping in on the exhale into the support. And then that's really comfortable. If you could be doing it with really ease, inhaling for six, exhaling for nine. See if at the very base of that exhale, you can just be still, like you're simmering in stillness before you feel drawn to inhale. If you're ever gasping for breath, you're Holding too long, or you're exhaling for too long, you need to shorten it. And you're Exhaling the same amount of air, of course, you're just slowing it down. And as subtle and as simple as this feels, it's very powerful, very effective in improving your cardiovascular health. Getting the oxygen to your cells and this opening here for our belly. I'm teaching later to the yoga teacher trainees about viscera. Creating space for our organs. This is so good for that. One more breath here. Again, if you can do it, inhale for six, exhale for nine with a pause at the end. Normally, And 
knees <clears throat> fall off to your side. You come up to sit and just turn your bolster. You can sit up on the end of it. Like we started in our meditation. Rub the palms together. One hand over the other, deep breath in. Exhale. At the end of your exhale, turn palms up on the thighs. Cast your gaze slightly downward. And if you have time, sit here for a few more minutes. Thank you so much for being here. It's always wonderful to see the faces of those joining me live. And I hope that those of you who watch it later find some benefit from this heart opening practice. Namaste.